What's up you guys, it's Herpy Derpy. Today I'm going to bring you guys the finals of my Monotype tournament. It's going to be a Ground vs. Psychic against Pokemon's Assassins vs. LU93 or something like that. But anyways, right off the bat you can see that Pokemon's is going to switch out his Crocodile into his Claydol to take the Will-O-Wisp and then proceed the trick on his Glade. And the Glade is not going to like that Choice Scarf since the Glade is most likely a bulk up set, so it's running max HP, max special defense, and otherwise it doesn't really have much attack, so Glade is basically crippled for the rest of the game, and that's great for Pokemans. Altai probably should have checked for the leftovers when he burned that clay doll, but I guess it got a little bit careless, and that is definitely going to cost him his Glade. But this Apowdon is going to start stockpiling up, and this Apowdon is actually a really cool set. I really don't see a stockpile with Apowdon much, but this Apowdon set is going to proved to be very, very useful this match, since he, you're going to see that later on this Apowdon does have Roar, and that's going to allow him to scout out the rest of the team, since in my Monotype match, I specifically made it a rule so that you do not have Wi-Fi, so you can't see your opponent's team. So having a Pokemon that has Roar is definitely a good thing to have this match. Uh, Altai also has a uh, Pokemon with Roar in the form of his Mew, so that's also great planning on his part as well. But it's a Claydol versus Glade again. The Glade is going to dodge the first Toxic, but is going to get hit by the second one. And this Claydol is pretty much going to be fodder at this point, since it's not going to be able to take uh, too much damage anymore. So the Powdown is going to come in to absorb the Shadow Sneaks, and it's going to proceed to start stockpiling up once again, because... That's what Poudon does, or at least um, Pokemon's Assassin's Poudon does. However, Altai decides to go into his Deoxys D instead of his Mew this time. Hopefully, start setting up some entry hazards against this Poudon since he really doesn't have much for this Poudon. But his Slow King can definitely scare off a Poudon as long as the Poudon doesn't start getting some more stockpile boost. So, Pokemon's is going to switch out, go into his Claydol now as fodder, and that's perfectly fine with him because he doesn't really need Claydol anymore since Stealth Rux isn't really going to be doing that much since all his Pokemon are part ground, so that's definitely a big fact, a uh, big plus for Pokemon's. But I, uh, the Golurk is going to scare off that Slow King with a Shadow Punch and instead is going to substitute on the Switch. Shadow Seek is not even going to be able to break the sub, which is really unfortunate for Altai. Uh, however, Deoxys D can break the sub with one Nightshade, which is good enough for him, but the Shadow Punch is going to do a ton of damage to Deoxys D, and this Golurk is looking great, because this Golurk can definitely cripple a bunch of Pokemon on Altai's team, considering that it is part Ghost, and Ghost types will, uh, Ghost type moves will be doing a ton of damage to all his Psychic-type Pokemon. But uh, he can't really do anything against Mew, since the Mew can threaten him out with a Will-O-Wisp. Uh, Altai is going to play it safe, while Poudon is once again going to come back in and pretty much make Altai's life miserable. I'm going to speed this part up right now, because this is going to be one of the stalliest parts ever. You're going to see that Poudon, by going for some Roars, he has finally scouted out the rest of Altai's team, because he did see the Jirachi, and he also saw the Metagross. So now Altai, or Pokemans knows that, you know, since the rest of his Pokemon are definitely weak, uh, to ground type moves like the Jirachi and the Metagross that he can definitely win the game if he starts stalling out quite a bit. So he's going to pretty much go into his Apowdon and just keep stalling, but unfortunately for Altai, Altai can't really force this Apowdon out unless he, uh, unless the Apowdon roars one of his Pokemon uh, into a Mew. So that's going to be really unlikely, by the way. You're going to see that. It's not going to, it's going to be, it's going to take a long time for that to happen. So <laughs> that's why I sped it up. But yeah, this, like, Hepatron is just completely, just completely shutting him down. That's actually, I don't know, that burn does seem quite a bit unfortunate on, to have on a Hepatron. I felt like probably the Slow King might have Toxic or something like that, and getting the Toxic on the Hepatron definitely would have been much better than just going for a Will-O-Wisp, but, oh well, like, that's what you get for burning instead of Toxicking. But at this point, at this rate, um, it should be coming in a little bit. The Hepatron is finally going to roar him out into a Mew, so there we go. Now, uh, Pokemon is finally going to switch out and go into his Crocodile to take the incoming Roar because he knows that the Mew is going to go for the Roar, and uh, he's going to get Roared right into Landorus. Now, the Landorus is going to go for the Earthquake, probably thinking the Mew is going to go for Roar again, but the Mew actually goes for will o -Wisp, but misses, and this that's actually very, very unfortunate for Altai because had the will o -Wisp hit, the Landorus is basically going to be useless for the rest of the game, and that's pretty much going to allow uh, Altai to get a little bit uh, of some room to keep going for a few more roosts and just get Mew's HP back up. 
But the Nido King is gonna come in now uh, to take the Will O Wisp. Uh, it takes it okay, I guess. Like it's not doesn't take it too bad. Nido King doesn't really mind the burn since it doesn't really use any physical attacks. But the Jirachi is gonna come in to hopefully try to take the incoming move. But Earth Power is gonna get the crit on the Jirachi. I ran the calc. I don't think the crit mattered because against a max HP max special defense Jirachi, the Nido King still would have been able to. Uh, nearly one hit KO, so I'm pretty sure the crit didn't matter. But either way, the Golurk is gonna come in, still do quite a bit of damage to the Slow King, but unfortunately it does go down. However, Delanderus can come in now, threaten it out with a Earthquake or U-turn, and now the U-turn is gonna allow Delanderus to give uh, Pokemon some switch initiative, go into his Krugadao, who can finish off this Metagross with one Earthquake, and this is pretty much going to be game now, because the Krugadao is Scarfed, it's got Moxie, the Mew can't live a hit, so the Krugadao is pretty much going to go for a late game sweep and completely destroy the rest of Altai's team. So that is going to be the game, hope you guys enjoyed this battle. Uh, for future Pokemon tournaments, um, a lot of people have been asking me, like, oh, are you going to do another tournament after this Mountain type tournament? I am thinking about that, but the thing is, like, this tournament lasted way too long, pretty much because people were like, oh yeah, I'll play, and then they don't even, like, do their match, so I'm gonna think of a different way to, a different system at least, to get people to play who are actually, like, active online and stuff like that, so stay tuned for that. I might post a video about it tomorrow, about my next upcoming tournament, because I really would like to start another tournament, since I really would like to encourage... Uh, different kind of game modes like the monotype and other various things so that's pretty much it for today uh, for those of you who don't know I did get a video on Pokemon Fit Beta so I'll leave a link to it on the screen you can go ahead and click on it right here and yeah so stay tuned uh, for news of my next upcoming tournament and I'll see you guys later peace out